All right, so to showcase something that uh, in the original version was uh, 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 locked when you you know connected the PSP to the P to a PS3 with a copy of Resident 2 with it, but in this it was actually handled by uh, with a with a patch that Ben Studios actually released you know post the launch of the game. Um, they were actually generals with that. Um, specifically, well, first of all, it, it, it boosts the game up normally, but uh, after connecting it, it just changed something and says that before after flashing us, we are being infected. This is called infected mode. Um, you can toggle it on and off in this emulated version. So if you don't want it, you can actually remove it. You know, if you don't want it. What does it do? It gives Grayson a different attire, specifically a Serpa uniform and yellow eyes of being infected. Uh, it unlocks an entire new category of intel that you can actually locate in the game, meaning that some areas have been kind of sort of rebalanced. Um, it also gives us access to um, rebalances a bit also the, the health system and gives us taking a new weapon. Um, you can also unlock other weapons by collecting all the intels and I will showcase all of them here. Um, but to, to also showcase this, um, the appearance of Grayson will stay the same um, even in the cutscenes that use, uh, uh, you know, the in-engine uh, stuff, uh, not the pre-ender, like in this case. We must huh. the carriers. They will lead so story-wise... Yeah, for a second there, I thought, I thought you know, the, 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 it was actually a computer to get a computer virus. Ben Studios it. made it very clear, even back then, that this is supposed to be non-canon, so don't take too much into account with this, Jova. Oh, so, yeah, like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, I mean... It's I'm, basically I mean, kind of like a goofy costume. I want if scenario. If scenario. Yeah. Right. Also, you noticed that our elf has gone from red to yellow, like in the main games. Also, because it's uh, reflective of uh, Grayson being infected, all elf packs from the entire game are gone, but as a result, you also have uh, um, regenerating elf. Anyway, let me actually talk about the new weapons, uh, starting with the Axar 004 Allure, an energy-based grenade launcher of unknown origin. Press the R button will fire limit a 10 grenade. Holding the R button will fire several grenades in short succession. Pressing and holding the L button will charge a grenade and apply a magnetic-like property that allows it to stick to surfaces and enemies. A mirror in the lower right corner of the screen indicates when the grenade is charged and ready to fire by pressing the R button. Awesome. Essentially, if they do something similar to the first game. Also, we will return the Magnum. The explosive .44 Magnum fires armor-piercing rounds useful for close quarter combat. Press the R button to fire a single explosive slug that sticks to most surfaces with the L button to detonate. Again, this is the weapon that you get by uh, connecting it to, you know, resistance 2. Then you get the plasma grenade that are basically sticky grenades and nothing that much more, but, you know, still useful. But again, it's also an interesting new grenade type that you get. Again, it's kind of similar to what the first game did. And then you have, in fact, yeah, the Longbow, Longbow 1S1K, a real weapon constructed from modifying camera technology. Pressing the air button fires a small iron flechette capable instantaneously hitting targets along this range. Pressing and holding the up button, charging of the shed capable passing through multiple targets. And the meter, blah, blah, the usual thing about, you know, designating uh, how much charge you have. Um, the one s one k is an instrument that from weapons that be to destroy drones. Um, so yeah, you have quite a, the, the selection of things to, to have fun with. Um, so I'm going to showcase in this, uh, you know, what, uh, what you can do with that. Go on, Jova. You know, it's funny how that bit said, a weapon of unknown origin, um, dudes, isn't it kind of obvious where it came from, the Chimera? Not, remember Jova, like you said, that there's also the, this fabled grey tech, quote unquote, and yeah, I'm also showcase, using this to showcase the rewind feature of the PSP. Um, again, I only waited until this point to show it, to make it a point of having a playthrough without uh, having to rely on it, but again, it is there if you want it. Um, there you go. And if you notice the elf in the in the bottom left corner, yeah, there you go, it regenerates. So, um, this basically makes the game a cakewalk when you get down to it, because you can stay down behind cover and the elf will regenerate, not to mention Grayson is slightly more, more fast and slightly more tanky in this. 
So, so really, if you want the, basically the easiest way to play the game, you can go with this if you want. So when you get down to it, this is kind of a preview for what some of the gameplay of Resistance 2 would be like, since this technically came out before a bit, Resistance 2. Uh, a bit, uh, just by mixing a bit of the, one, the thing of 1 and the thing of 2. Like, there I you mean, go, there's the, the grenade the, launcher. The ironic thing is, I mean, you still have... And uh, just to mention, the longbow is basically a version of... There you go, if you remember, some of the turrets actually operated with this. Uh, so essentially now you have a weapon that actually gives you that capability, which means it's very effective as one-shotting enemies. Uh, you know, the ironic thing is that this is probably still a more robust system than that of Resistance 2, if only because you have more weapons to use. And, and also more exotic type of weapons. Like, this is the kind of weapon design that I was expecting more to see in the games. Like, uh, I mean, I'm not gonna say I've never seen it before, but I always do have to tilt my head when it's the handheld counterpart that outdoes the console version. That's Sometimes it happens. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. a bit. It's a bit of an underdog kind of story. And you know, you know, it's not the worst scenario. Like, I won't act like the Resistance games are all trash or anything. I mean, but granted, we've already documented yeah, well yeah, yeah, how obviously. they've all had uh, their issues. That being said, I love how ironically, and I get it. You know, it's just a skin, but you could headcanon that in this mode, Grayson's a massive hypocrite about them letting an infectee fulfill the mission given that he himself is infected. Yeah, <laughs> and supposedly working still for Serpa, which is saying something that is implied by what happened after the events of the game, but it, again, for the, for the purpose of this specifically, it's not uh, agony canon. I wouldn't be surprised if, again, Ben Studio traded notes And with... I blew myself up. Whoops! Oops. But yeah, again, oh, I... That, it's one way to end it, but uh, before Gondra of Avena will say something before I Again, boss. I would not be surprised if Ben Studio were taking or trading heavy notes with... Uh, um, Insomniac, in, yes. Yeah, insomniac. Again, like, like he said, the way the story ends makes it coincide perfectly with what happens with Resistance 2. Like I said, the retcon of, you know, having, you know, female uh, humans... Uh, you know, being reconverted specifically still feels weird to me, especially because in Resistance 2 and 3, the conversion applies to everyone anyway, so it's not really too much of a big point. Um, but anyway, we, in, since uh, showcasing you every single piece of intel would mean having a part, the part being super long, you know, and having a lot to read, while interesting on its own, I'll just give you a quick summation because they're divided in four categories that I can easily sum up. One is the aforementioned infected, which, like I said, it's not canon and usually serves only for Grayson to find great tech scattered throughout, you know, the entire of the, the entirety of the game and commenting on that, uh, you know, uh, with a brief mention, I think, to Malikov. Then we have uh, the other three are actually canon. One is called Retribution, title drop, which is a sort of a diary that uh, Grayson is writing about, uh, you know, his feelings of his, of his life prior to the war, his relationship with his brother, his feelings towards the situation. Again, it's a bit more expanding his inner thoughts. Uh, like, for example, the Super Major Gar Gargoyle statue that we found in the uh, subterranean level of Paris, for example. Then we have the Cloven Lore, which is what it literally says on the tin, as in literally uses and behavior of the Cloven. So if you ever wanted to know more about their behavior, like what their relationship with Maliko, for example, you know, why they're so attached to human artifacts, uh, you can read these to know more about this. And the Secrets of the Maquis which basically tells that the Maquis were kind of assholes and they were scavenging technology and, you know, resources from other parts of the world, uh, particularly Europe, but also Japan, believe it or not. Uh, the chain gun is uh, specifically mentioned that it's the invention of a Japanese inventor. Um, but uh, they were basically scavenging this technology to amass for themselves to survive with little regards to everyone else. Uh, so once again, perpetrating a bit of French jerk nest stereotyping. Yay. Um, but it's good also to expand the lore about what happened to the other nations. Again, this is where part of that comes from. Again, it is cool stuff, and if you have the game, I urge you to actually find the collectibles and read them for themselves. I just did not think showing them, you know, would um, would be that stimulating for a commentary value, and it would take things too long. So, trust on my word and look up to it, or even the Resident Wiki if you really, you know, don't want to play the game for all for I know. Mm. There is one more thing that I did not even want to showcase, and it's something big iffy. 
Um, by collecting skill points, uh, as in stuff that you start when Insomnia started maple doing with uh, with Spire, for example, um, you have a couple of bonus things, uh, which are a photo gallery, which is you know harmless, uh, but others are a couple of uh, small cutscenes that are a couple of seconds, uh, which count as sort of bloopers, but not really. There are usually cutscenes that involves Nolan North's character, you know, the Maquis um, colonel, you know. Uh, repeating the line of the cutscene but then saying something that uh, saying something that's supposed to be like a funny line but most of the time comes off as slightly homophobic as in trying to uh you know compare grayson to a wuss uh, for example it's if you want to look them up on their own youtube you can find them i just don't think it was really good taste to actually show them but uh, again it's another thing you can look up if you want but that's kind of it so final thoughts Leaves. Um, well, in terms of um, presentation, you know, for being a PSP game, it's a lot more, for lack of a better term, livelier than the um, than the previous games. Uh, but for one thing, the music actually sounds like it's trying, as opposed to just being just droning noise in the background. I mean, it makes sense. You've got the Bioshock composer working on this. Mm-hmm. Um, the um, the characters. Uh, well, our, our main character, yeah, he's, he's a bit more emotional than, um, than you know, Grumpy Sod number one and slightly less Grumpy Sod number one that we've had before. Mm-hmm. Two number ones. Yeah, he's still, um, he's, he's still a bit, well, rough, but there's more of a reason for it this time as opposed to just being a mopey git. Um, and the rest of them are all fine too. Um, um, I like the, um, again, I played a lot of PSP games where a lot of the cutscenes were, um, still images. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, this, this holds up all right. At least the still images are drawn really well. Mm-hmm. It's like, um, although, and although in terms of that, though, I still prefer Twisted Metal's head on comic book approach with its ending cutscenes. A lot of times leaves the PSP basically had the visual novel style for, you know, or saving cost and, you know, not having, uh, uh, you know, potentially ugly models presented. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay g- with that. Games like Jean d'Arc did this all the time. Square Enix was really instead upping up the game with both um, Kingdom Hearts Bird by Sleep, Crisis Core and Dissidia. Well, they're Square Enix. Yeah, you know, they have a hidden. They have they had a hidden talent of um, of being able to max out stuff you could do on handheld consoles. Mm-hmm. Not so much nowadays, but that's only because well, there aren't really that many handheld consoles around these days. Obviously, oh, um, um, it's fine. I, I mean, it's more invested than the other ones, story wise. Um, I mean, they don't just kill off the main character suddenly out of the blue, like in the second game. Um, it's more interesting than the first one. Um, did we did we do the third one? Yes. 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 Uh, yeah. Wow. Was, yeah, the third game story is so investing. I can't even remember if we did it. Or... <laughs> Waves. Waves. Um, How could you forget about Capelli's son a, and the glove? Family, the glove, Dwibs. His son's glove. It shows the frailty of his son who was sick, but is a okay the next time we meet him. Disney's Disney's weird investment with Han Solo's dice was more investing than the glove. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, as for the family bits, again, I've seen the story a million times before in um in war films or war video games have done better. Even in um in Downfall where it was I think that bit was I think that bit of the whole boy and his family thing was made up for the movie. Hmm. That was more that was more interesting. Uh anything else I can mention? Uh the gameplay? Oh yeah the gameplay. Um um yeah I'm pretty sure there were the odd um, first-person shooters on the v- oh, sorry, on, on the PSP. I still have to play the Killzone game that was done by Guerrilla Ver Liberation, I think it's called. But uh, I think there might have been a few, few Call of Duty games on there as well. I 
don't know if uh, what I just mentioned, the Killzone game, is a proper TPS or FPS or something else entirely. Uh, it might be even isometric, for all I know, but uh, we'll have to see eventually. Killzone is not a... too far from now. But yeah, for a... Um... Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it looks like any typical third-person um, shooter. Well, an over-the-shoulder third-person shooter, I should say. Um, mm. I mean, there's not much you can say about it. I mean, it's really hard nowadays, even back then, I think, to screw up a um, to screw up a shooter game in terms of gameplay. I don't know. And those Quantum Break somehow managed to. Oof. <laughs> also, the Battleship yeah. video game, technically, the ADHD version. Remember, guys, it's a cover-based shooter without a cover system. <laughs> Even though that doesn't make a lick of sense. Yeah, I, I have played other games that aren't meant to be cover-based shooters, and yet uh, they have better cover systems. <coughs> <Man>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's about it, really. I mean, it's a solid experience, and it's more interesting in terms of presentation than the other games, which is funny considering how much less space um, they had to work with. Java. Um, God. This may actually be the best of, of the Resistance games that I've seen so far. And again, let me prephrase this by saying that I'm not going to act like Resistance as a franchise as a whole is crap. I will say, though, while I acknowledge that there is a fan base, I can kind of understand why this is not one of the most talked about franchises, since, again, aside from the multiplayer, it's nothing super special. Which is where this game comes into mind, because this game does a lot of what I've been hoping, well, retroactively, since the series isn't going, but what I've been hoping for from the series, you know, it works with its unique concept, but remembers the essentials of A, having a protagonist that can still hold a story, and B, not just trying to uh, ape off of Call of Duty with the two-weapon system thing. Which, admittedly, even the main series learned uh, when they brought back the proper weapon wheel f for Resistance 3, but no, like, this game really does feel like the full package. The presentation, it's doing the best it can for a PSP game. Obviously, things aren't going to look as great as the HD consoles, but no, what they do is interesting. The story is probably the most nuanced of any of the Resistance plots. Like, the characters are flawed, but arguably work through those flaws and whatnot. Now, I won't act like the story is flawless, since, yeah, Grayson can be a bit iffy at the start. Thankfully, he does get better, and I can actually buy his development. What I have trouble buying is kind of the final act having everything to do with, oh, suddenly Grayson and this girl are love interests, who may or may not have had sex. It's probably there just to try to, you know, reinforce a connection to make the, the final boss more poignant, which, uh, let me just say in advance, uh, we didn't really need it. Uh, I, uh, I didn't need it, uh, and for example. Not just that, they threw in a sort of cuck arc with the implication that our rival hated us because, oh, she loved you, I love her, but she chose you instead, die! Uh, 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 the French. <laughs> like... Um, Holy cow, like, yeah, no, I do not think we needed that. I do not think we needed that romance out of nowhere. And also, it did leave me scratching my head. Had she already succumbed at that point? Had the Chimera sensed that the thing that she cooked up, while it would stop their process, would sort of kind of make things worse in some regard? Like... I do feel like there's some stuff that could have been answered, especially knowing that, you know, we never followed up again with Grayson's adventures since, to my understanding, Burning Skies has nothing to do with this game. So... No, like I said, it's set in New York during the early stages of the, the invasion of America. So, like, again, I do find it a bit weird that they left some stuff unanswered, Maybe they were expecting I, a I get, Yeah, sequel? I get the idea. Maybe they wanted to make a sequel at some point. Keep in mind that uh, this happens all the time. If I remember correctly, 
Uh, I think Ready at Dawn, before doing the Order 1886, uh, we're supposed to do a uh, God of War for the PS Vita, a God of War game, if I recall correctly. So, again, being rescheduled to do something else, it's something that happens all the time. For all we know, maybe Ben was supposed to, you know, maybe wanted the idea of making a sequel, you know, but then instead they decided to do go out and try the Golden Abyss for the PS Vita, for all we know. It happens again. Yeah, that is possible. Um, but again, it, as it is now, for the most part, the story is good, save for... And the weird thing is, a lot of the worst aspects come up at, like, the last act. Like, they feel like stuff that was shoehorned in, honestly. Now, granted, maybe one could argue that, hey, Grayson was developing a relationship with her. And yes, I would agree you could potentially see it that way. I still do feel like they made the jump to let's have sex way too early, or at the very least, no. Like, I could get them falling in love, but to the point of having, like, suddenly that hot instant, to the point where, keep in mind, he knows she's infected and had every shot to kill her, but chose not to, so, yeah, he down bad. Like, no, that felt just all of a sudden very too sudden. Also, making Grayson infected in the end. That's a thing, I guess. Keep Again. in mind, Jova, it's it's strongly implied that it's set uh, you know a lot, uh, like a couple of years after it. And like the Intel said, particularly one of Resistance Two, but it did not show that much. Um, it's ba it's basically confirmed that Serpa got in contact with him after the events of Operation Overstrike. You know. Okay, so okay. That's... By the time he was labeled as Cloven Killer in Russia, he was either infected or part of a Sentinel program, or which, both. Which, okay, you know, if that is the case, which granted, from what you said, that may have been established in Resistance to itself, so fair beans there. I can get people being confused by it, though, seeing as how a lot of that stuff just kind of come up and go and we'd be left wondering... Well, aren't you a hypocrite now, mister, now that you're infected? But, again, to give him credit... Keep also in mind that at the end of the game, you know, Grayson, despite being encouraged to take back the jacket of his brother, you know, he uh, voluntarily decides to sort of let go of the past and, you know, any self uh, for the sake of, you know, moving forward. So Which I do too. like. Like, no, like, again, for as much as I'm critiquing the last bit... I wouldn't say that it hurts the story enough for me to even call it bad. I still think this is probably the best narrative we've gotten out of these because, well, first off, let me just say they use every character relatively well to their proper extents and whatnot. Like, it doesn't feel like any character is wasted, say for maybe uh, our love interest father, but... It just seems Dr. to Bouchard, be... Uh, it he, just... he, he's, mostly, he's mostly mentioned, he's more of a ne albatross tied to the neck of someone, but he's technically there for a cutscene and then dies, agreed. It is truly a running gag in this series that important scientist characters really do get the shaft. Uh... From what I heard, Bernie Skies also does this. So. Oof. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's like the one character I'd say was kind of like, you know, we didn't even really need to have this character. You could have just replaced him with, oh, the love interest is injecting herself in secret and whatnot, as opposed to he's experimenting on her and all that jazz. Um, it does also give a good sense of a victory against the Chimera with unfortunate side effects and whatnot. They did not knew it would, it would have happened. So yeah, again, I'll give them credit. They handled this whole... We're a part of the franchise, but we're not exactly sure how much we should affect it thing relatively well. So, no, again, I appreciate it. And, again, it feels weird, but it feels like this might be the Resistance game with the most effort focused. If I can say, like, not the most effort given, but the most effort focused. Like, again, I don't know if we can say how Insomniac felt completely about making these games, but it does seem like Ben's studio were the most focused on, you know, getting this cover base shooter out all well and through, essentially. With a good identity of its own, because I can easily say this is the best soundtrack we've gotten from this series. Like, I'm sorry, Resistance fans, but... 
none of the music from any of the main games managed to grab me as much as the music in this one did. Again, not acting like it's the absolute holy grail, but I can actually remember music from this game, and it feels like it's all well suited for each scenario too. Which is just something that it feels like Resistance had an issue with. And again, part of me wonders, um, did this game also have a multiplayer? It also has the advantage that we see the return of characters that, you know, we adored and whatnot. Uh, from Cartwright to even the narrator from the first game. Not to say that we never cared about the Doctor, but I'ma be honest, with Resistance 2, it was more or less a fresh new cast. Most of them sadly died, so that by the time of Resistance 3, the only returning character was the Doctor and, well, already went into what happened with him there, essentially. Here, no one just has to die for a gruesome scene or whatnot. Character deaths, for the most part, do feel like they have a point. Even, again, the father's death, if only to show that hope is apparently lost, only for it to turn out not to be the case. Resistance Retribution had five modes in multiplayer. Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, uh, and a couple personalized one, like called Assimilation and stuff like that. That and it, it, it lasted for a while. The game launched in 2009, and the servers were disabled in 2015. Wow. So very, very respectable cycle, admittedly. Especially for a PSP game. Like, from what I recall, those ones didn't last as long as the console ones. So, no, good stuff here. And I would say that I feel like this game truly well and did earn it. It is honestly a game that does tempt me to give it a try. It's that good looking overall. Now, I don't know if I'll go out of my way to, but no, like, again, kudos to Ben Studio. They have made what is, in my opinion, what appears to be potentially the best overall Resistance game of the bunch. Pedro. Uh, yeah, like, like uh, the others have said, this is probably the better game of these four. Um, you know, like, uh, like I said, the, like, the presentation is good, the music is good. Um, and while it's still not great, yeah, I can at the very least have a better understanding of what the writing is trying to go for here. Although, like Teo said, yeah, a lot of there's a lot of whatever. What the fuck is this moments where the where the characters act unnecessarily phobic? But um, uh, but no, I can understand that. And like I said, some of the one-liners are so cheesy; they're awesome. So that's nice. Um, so yeah, I guess like as a, as a little action game to play on the PSP and, and the, the first person shooting mechanics seem perfectly serviceable from what I can see here. I so... forgot if I mentioned the only thing that at least this particular version on the PS4 and PS5 might take you off a bit is the sensitivity of the movement, but those can be adjusted in the option need the sensitivity. So there's sure. that. It's not the default one, but it's a bit sluggish. Sure. Um, it's probably because of how the analog stick for the PSP was. Like maybe um, it's one of those cases. Remember where Pedro Vo? Do you remember Pedro Vo? This is uh, with the um, the dual shock, uh, you know, conversion in mind. Uh, like he said and showcased at the beginning. Uh, uh, ben Studios made this with the idea of connecting it to the PS3, and as a result, you could remote play using the Dual Shock, and the game would register that in a different control scheme. So oh, this really? emulated version uses that by default. Oh, okay, okay. Again, it's pretty cool, actually. Sure, hmm. sure, sure. Well, and, yeah, and if you can configure it, sure. I guess that's fine. Uh, yeah, no, like I said, it's still not great, uh, but I can't at least understand uh, that what they were trying to do here because the other three games had seemed like they were confused <laughs> but uh yeah uh, yeah that's the kind of an interesting part of how the band studio made a better resistance game than insomniac so that's quite the interesting s scenario never really thought that we would end this by saying that the 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 the, the psp spin-off is the better game i know right here we here, here, here we are um Again, made I, by the I same studio I, who brought us Bubsy 3D at that. 
I mean, I can't even say that, like, uh, okay, I, I can even pose the, uh, the the chance of maybe Ben making another Resistance game because the, the 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 creators of this and Days Gone are now out of Ben Studio, so even they can't... Can, so I guess it's just one of those things. And even if Resistance was to come back, I'm pretty sure Insomniac would want to handle it themselves. Uh, so... Uh, let me put it this way. I'm not saying that I, I, like whatever this way, I can understand that. Well, I do understand that this is that it's fans. I do think that Insomniac's efforts are better put elsewhere because, as we've seen through the mainline games, this whole gritty first-person shooter, realistic, seventh-generation type thing is not really for them. The fact that Ben Studio did it better than them kind of says something. I think, you know. Uh, so I feel like Insomniac now is in a better spot because they're actually working on something that suits them a lot better, right? So if Resistance is to come back, definitely get somebody else to make it. I think like they did with because again, the the one time we, I mean, who did the the, the Vita one? Was it Ben? Uh, as well? No, a completely different team. Uh, I'll search in the meantime. Go on. Sure, sure, sure. Well, regardless of how the the Vita game is. The PSP game handled to a different developer did turn out to be the better one, at least in, if you ask me. So, uh, nihilistic software rebranded in Instigate games, which was shut down after 2012. Resident Burning Sky was one of the last things they did. Huh. Hmm. Well, okay. Uh, regardless, if Resistance was indeed to come back, I think it's better off doing what we did here, which is end it off to a different developer than Insomniac, because as we've seen through that, the, 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 the main trilogy, I don't think this whole gritty first-person shooter thing is really for Insomniac. Not Honestly, okay. I think I mentioned that during the Insomniac uh, the main trilogy run. Give it to the Hell Divers developers. They seem to mm. be doing a decent enough job with horde-based shooting. Yeah, yeah. So I could see even, that suiting resistance. Even if it doesn't have a you know a core you know a big type of plotting, it's mostly focused on multiplayer. I think there is potential in that. Sure. Um yeah. That's uh that sounds good. Um that being yeah, so the game overall this series is an interesting foot an interesting part of Insomniac's history. But I can understand why it's not exactly something that people are screaming to return. Because, yeah, the like... Insomniac games are, are very flawed. And the, and the better of these four games is a PSP spinoff that not a lot of people have played. So I can definitely see why this, like, while I do it, like I said, yes, this series has its fans and that's cool and all. But at the same time... I can definitely understand why this franchise was put in 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 the fridge because there's not really a lot here. It's like I said, get, like like there are better first person shooter games than these. It's like I but said, so... it, it, it was swept up in the time where, okay, it, it, like the oversaturation of the third or first person shooter was not too prominent, but it was definitely when the game industry was on its way to that. It the also drove up made the, making it, a multiplayer. It, and it also made the mistake of, once again, trying to follow the Call of Duty full step by making the game, the, the games more military, modern militaristic focus instead of, you know, maintaining an aspect similar to the to the World War II aesthetic. I feel mm -hmm. like, like with many things, there needs to be a balance between following the trends, but still having your own fresh identity or like that. Like, say what you will about some other franchises, you know, there is stuff to be said, but look at something like, say, shoot, almost any Nintendo franchise that has a following because of its unique self, or look at some of Sony's special IPs or whatnot, like, I mean, there are definitely people who want a Ghost of Tsushima, even though it's been a while since the first, like, and Horizon has practically become its own multimedia blockbuster franchise from having just one game, because, again, it does stuff similar to a formula, but it has enough unique stuff to, you know, keep people wanting for more. Again, for Resistance, it does have the unique idea of the aliens and how that goes about, but aside from that, I can't say it had much stuff going for it. Especially since I can't even really pin down a consistent, well, a completely consistent gameplay style from, like, 
all the games, since it feels like each game had its own drastic change here and there. I do agree with Tio that of the console games, I think the third one probably had its gameplay nailed down the most, but we can't really see it well refined because, well, that's where the series more or less ended. Anyway, you're done, Pedro? Yeah, basically, like I said, like, uh, uh... Uh, if this franchise does come back at any point, uh, sure, I guess. But at the same time, I'm not holding my breath because I don't really think there's much here that we can't get from... Like Teo said, Helldivers 2, I think, is a better example of how Sony can have a multiplayer shooter. So... I feel like there's not... I feel like there's not enough... I mean, there's there's the fans, yes, but I don't think the fan base of this series is, is big enough to justify the invest, investment, honestly. And like I said, there are other first-person shooters you can play that are arguably even better than these. So, honestly, I don't see much of a reason for this series to come back, uh, aside from, I guess, pleasing a very niche group of fans, I guess, but at the same time... Eh. I feel like at this point we can just move on. Go on, too. Alright, so first let me talk about this game. Um, it's perfectly fine. What I did not showcase that much is potentially still the difficulty. Towards the end of a game, you will still bull die a lot, and that can be very frustrating, especially because the gameplay lacks that kind of progression that Resident Evil 3 introduced, which is why, like he said, Resident Evil 3 still probably my favorite game of a bunch when it comes strictly to gameplay. It is, however, to be noted that this game has a better type of presentation, you know, and uh, showcasing of a story. Um, following directly from one and kind of for countries the transition towards two. Um, it's the, it's perfectly a perfectly sizable spin-off that, you know, fits itself very well, like a good, uh, you know, puzzle piece, you know, into the franchise lore. Um, and it kind of makes you demanding more. If anything, I think we should have got more spin-offs like this. Uh, if anything, there is a potential set throughout the, the entire world. And we can mention one of the previous part. It's also a good excuse to showcase different, you know, um, diversity in protagonists. Again, make a game set in Australia or, you know, even in the middle of Africa during the invasions in those respective regions, for example, you know, uh, or Japan for the matter, India. The possibilities technically are never ending. And the only thing that the reason we were limited in the main game is because, uh, once again, following the Call of Duty formula meant that the game had to become very American centric. And I get it, Insomniac is an American team, work with what you're familiar with. But goddamn, the world is big. Give up the... Again, the first game managed to make it work with having the UK setting and this spin off with a French uh, German one. You know, what's the excuse of. Uh, on the side of Korea, especially because with the Ratchet and Clan, for example, they have such a different variety of locales. It really feels like um, Resident was the project for them to chillax a bit technically, you know, in order to, uh, when it came to having ideas. Um, the only real thing that the, this game is at fault is the script. Um, I don't mind the out of the one liners uh, because, again, they're trying, like I said, if you have experience with war movies uh, like Where the Eagle Flies, I think it's called, um, you probably have an idea of what the type of protagonist creation is supposed to be and a type of, you know, um, invasion and counterattack this is supposed to represent. Once again, the, in this case, the, the chimeras are standing for the Nazis and it's a bit similar to how, you know, a French resistance will do things in World War II. Like you said, you can tell that Ben Studios was heavily inspired by Wolfenstein in making this, uh, particularly Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Um, so that's pretty cool. But a lot of times the things that come out of Grace of Mouth really needed just a rewrite. I cannot even imagine they might have felt cool even back then. Like I said, yes, you have to make it a point that he doesn't like, for example, the French or Colonel Mallory, you know, the North character. But goddamn, a lot of times he just breaks it up, you know, and, uh, and it really is a mood killer. All of times. Uh, no, again, I'm still curious to see what the deal is with the Siphon Filter games, uh, but I do wonder if the dialogue is also reflected there because the director and writer are basically the same people when you get down to it. So I am admittedly curious to see, but that's something we'll find out maybe way, way later on the line. Um, 
So no, the plot is interesting. It just needed a better rewrite of you know particular lines of the script. The music is perfectly fine. The gameplay is technically fine, but could have been a bit better, but still better than two, for example, or one for that matter. Mm -hmm. um, so at the end of the day, this is technically you know possibly the more balanced game of the entire franchise, but I still prefer playing free when it comes to gameplay only. Um, but that's kind of it. As for the future of the franchise, I honestly think there's still potential. Like I said, just focusing entirely not on progressing further the plot, but doing spin-offs set during the years of Invasion, you know. Um, and as for gameplay, I mean, if the Call of Duty, if they showcased that they wanted to change the formula by sticking to what, you know, what was popular at the time, Call of Duty, make the games more similar to Doom 2016 at this point, I mean, it works. Huh? Why not? Uh, and considering how now Doom is part of Microsoft, you will be a good contender. You just need to find a developer that is willing to do it, which uh, I get the idea of around that many around. Uh, and, and, a, and, a couple, and a couple of them are Doom. But honestly, I think the Doom 2016 formula fits very well, this franchise. Uh, make it about someone part of a Sentinel program who really is checked up uh, and is the terror, the pain of you know the Chimeras. Again, with the including stuff like, for example, the killing mechanic. Imagine the transplanted the idea of uh, when uh, the the demons are being afraid of the Doom Slayer transposed with the Chimeras, uh, which are supposed to be this force of invasion, but has killed the entire humanity. But you are the beacon of hope and are beating the shit out of them left and right. And when you're about to kill them, you see in them the expression of pure terror. That would be cool. Um, it's just a matter of also execution. But like I said, the seeds can be very, very to be planted. It's just that I get the idea. Like Pedro said, also Insomniac has better things to do, so I wouldn't want necessarily them to them to do that. To do that. But there is potential to 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 do that kind of stuff. It would be just a matter of you know Sony thinking about balancing out the budget. Um, and the effort put into their studios and their games, which is the thing uh, that are, they're currently struggling with. Uh, so we'll have to see really what the future holds. I'll admit, you but do I'm... just make me imagine a crossover between Doom and... Uh, uh, no, I, ju I, I just want the gameplay formula, not ga gameplay, not crossover, especially considering how these days everything is a crossover with each other and all the times uh, is just mindless and I'd rather not uh, want that. Fair. Um, but uh, so my point is, uh, I do believe there is a possibility for this franchise to return. Of course, not in the hands of the original developer, but maybe someone else, uh, you know. And it will still be nice uh, because Sony has, like, once again, this bad habit of just, you know, leaving uh, things, uh, leaving things and sometimes pretending they never existed, aside of very sporadic appearances. Like, thankfully, like I said, this showed up in Astro Ball, Astro's Playroom. So I'm grateful for that. Mm. Um, but again, we'll see what the future holds. We're not doing uh, Burning Skies just yet because, like I said, I'm not paying up for a composite cable for the, the PS Vita and this game hasn't been ported yet. So who knows? If it's on in the future, I'll be more than gladly, you know, glad to actually give it a try. You know, Maybe we'll someday Vita happens. emulation will get to that point. It is technically already, but Burning Skies is one of the few games who fucks, fucks it up start from the starting screen, Jova. So Ooh. we're just having a bad deal Re with this. Re so. Remember, BPS SPP to this day apparently still has crashing issues with this game. So I can only imagine how harder it is to emulate the Vita 1 then. <laughs> it, it, well, the Vita 1, from what he's seen, goes back to being FPS and being more similar to the console, the main console games. But like I said, if it ever gets ported, I'm be more than happy to give it a look, uh, just for completion, completion's sake. Um, we're not doing the comic book. Like I said, it's still a pain in the ass, so we're not doing that. Dang, um, that bad? Well, like, like I said, a chore. Fair My enough. point is, uh, we're done with this franchise, at least for the time being. Um, well, not immediately. Tune in eventually, when instead we'll pass the baton to... Guerrilla games to see how they handle instead uh, their quote unquote Halo Killer Killzone. See ya. See, see ya. you then.